How do you make applesauce, you wonder? Let me tell you. First of all, welcome back. Welcome to the video. There are people out there that don't know how to make applesauce. So I thought, I'm gonna make a video. Why not? I'm in quarantine in my home. Self-quarantine, that is. So I thought, let's make applesauce. So I have Ohio apples, because I'm from Ohio. And these are Fuji apples. Sweet, crisp eating. Well, it's what they had when I was at the store. So we're going to make applesauce. The first thing you want to do is peel your apple. I've got this handy... Did you see that waterfly? Wow. I got a handy... Look at that knife. That's like perfect. That's a perfect peel of knife. And then I got my big old knife here. But I'm going to cut these apples in half. And you have to trust me that I'm doing this because you can't see me. But I can show you half. Cut the apples in half. And then we're going to cut that half in half. That's a quarter. And then, you know, some people don't even know that. I'm telling you. People out in the world try to get change. And it's like they look at you and it's like, um... How much do I get back? I had to help a clerk once give me the right change because she was clueless. So I'm cutting all these apples in quarters. My daughters are homeschooling right now because it's mandatory that my grandkids don't go to school. They're doing pretty good. They're doing pretty good. My daughter said today went a lot better. Then yesterday, she had to get a system down. She has a little system going now. She was getting overwhelmed because the boys kept asking her questions. Like, you know, one after another. Kind of like the, mom, 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 mom. Well, let me tell you. When my kids were little, there was a point I changed my name. I said, do not call me mom because I will not answer. Well, what should we call you? I am not telling you what you should call me. That's the whole point of this. That's what I did. Shame on me, right? <laughs> you know what else I did once? I went on strike. I did that a couple of times. I just was exhausted. I was tired. I was tired of just tired. I was just tired. So one Sunday afternoon, I made a sign that said, on strike. I laid on the couch, I put the little sign above me on the couch, and I laid there all day. What's for dinner? Read the sign. Really, Mom? Really? Read the sign. Now, I'm, I'm peeling the apples now with this fancy dancy knife that I have. It might take a while. And that one hit the floor. Let's see how long it takes for my dog to notice that. So what you want to do is peel your apple, then I've got a pan here, pan, see I got a pan, cut your apple like in half and then like in pieces. I'm going to do this in my hand, watch me cut my hand, woo, okay, in pieces. See that's all you do, pieces, and you throw it in the pan. So we're going to do that to all these, whoop, okay, you can see, all these apples I have down here, that's what we're going to be doing. You're in my cupboard. I see that works a little bit better than my tripod. This is just cooking with Michelle, fun times. So my other daughter isn't going to work because her kids keep getting sick, so that's happening. Her, the, my, no, another one hit the floor. Lucky dog. Lucky dog. My dog, granddaughter's teacher made a YouTube channel and she is teaching the kids through her YouTube channel, which I think is amazing. I do think that is amazing. They were reading a book in school and she went to the school and got the book so she could finish reading them. They ended like on chapter four or something. So now she's going to, these kids are going to be able to have the rest of the story read to them. 
So, lucky them. Oh, I have a doctor's appointment today. I have to go. I have to go to this. Cannot miss it. That's... I hope I don't get sick. I hope I don't get sick. But there's no way in the world that I could miss that because I have to go. Mandatory for me to be there. I think I've probably said that enough, right? Y'all get it. I have to go. Nothing else is happening in my life today. Probably not yours either. Because the world's quarantined. This is just crazy. Crazy. I do know that in my area, I believe there is a police chief and a couple fire or a fire chief, excuse me, and a couple firemen that are now quarantined because they have been exposed. Well, you knew that was going to happen, right? And there's been a death in my county, like at a plant somewhere close to me where they work, and people are self-quarantined, the people that work with them are now self-quarantined. Am I making any sense at all? I don't feel like I'm making sense right now. I'm multitasking and using my thought process to talk and cut apples isn't it's not easy. But anyway, I planted my uh, green peppers today. I did that. Hopefully, you know what I did though? Because I just didn't know. I put two seeds in each container. And I'll leave the better one and take, you know, I'll take one out. My husband texts me. He's like, he's worried about how many, how many vegetable plants I'm going to plant now. Because he's just, I don't know. He has a plan in his head with what the garden's going to look like. And I have a plan in my head what it's going to look like. So... I told him, I said, you know what? You can build the garden and I'll do the seeds in the greenhouse, okay? You leave my project alone and I'll leave your project alone. So he texted me today. We were texting. I said, oh, I planted the peppers. How many did you plant? Well, I told him. I said, I planted five dozen. And he's like, you did what? I'm just kidding. I didn't plant five dozen peppers. So I just said, it's all going good here. Everything's good. Everything's good. They're in my little greenhouse over there that I made, and we'll wait and see. I've got, like, a chart going. I actually have a chart on paper that I have going that I'm keeping track of these seeds because I probably wouldn't remember. Probably not. This is a lot of apples. I need one of those apple peelers. Does anybody have an apple peeler and do you use it? Does it work? Does it work? Because I'm losing a lot of apple over here. Which if I had a compost pile, I have to rinse my knife off. Hold on. Getting too juicy. If I had my compost pile built, I could put them in there. My husband is building me a compost pile. Or a compost bin so I can do that. The only thing is, well, yeah, I could do that. My dad used to have a compost pile. He had a couple of them that he used to transfer back and forth. He did this for probably 20 to 30 years. Same compost pile, same garden. Well, you know what his garden soil looks like, right? His soil is just perfect, just perfect. And he did an experiment one day. He thought, you know, it's really hot in there. I'm going to see if I can cook this potato inside my compost pile. So he got a potato from the house and he put it in his compost pile, like stuck it in the middle and went back a day or two later to look at it and he cooked it. He made a baked potato in his compost pile. It was that hot in the summer. And you know what else we learned? Tobacco will kill your tomato plants. Tobacco kills tomato plants. The neighbors have a hot tub. Whoever was in the hot tub visiting threw their cigarette butts over the fence into my dad's garden. Come to find out, his tomatoes quit growing. He's like, what is going on? Then he found all these cigarette butts in there. Killed his garden, or his tomatoes. 
not sure if he ended up moving his tomatoes or not, but my dad had beautiful carrots, beautiful everything in his garden. Beets, which I think I'm going to try to plant beets this year. And asparagus. He taught me yesterday how to plant asparagus. Somebody gave him, he said, asparagus roots that were about three years old. And he planted them deeper than what they're supposed to be. Much deeper than what they're supposed to be. And he had asparagus for 20 years. Good asparagus. Good asparagus. All right, well, I am going to finish cutting up these apples, and I will be back. All right, all my apples are cut up. They're in the pan on the stove. And now I'm going to put this on like like a medium heat. I mean, I don't want them. I want them to get warm and then start getting soft. So right now I'm going to put the, put the lid on it. And then as they soften, I don't have a masher, but I have one of these things. So as they start to soften, I'll, I'll mush them up with that. If you want chunky applesauce, just don't chunk it up so much. If you like your applesauce with less chunks, mush it up better. It's that simple. I do not add sugar to mine or cinnamon. I don't like either one. These are sweet enough. So I don't add anything to it. I don't add water. I don't add anything. And these apples will just start getting warm and mushing on their own. So we'll let them sit there for a minute and we'll come back and see how they're doing. All right, let's take the lid off and see what we got. It's gonna steam. Ooh. So now we have apples in there and they're softening up. I probably could take this now and maybe, it, yep, I could start mushing. So that's all you do. And you mush. I'm sure there's a better term for that, right? But I need to get an actual longer, this is burning, this is burning my knuckles. I probably need to invest in a, a masher. So, or a musher, whatever you want to call it. But that's what you do. Just keep mashing until it's the texture you want. I'm going to let this cook and we'll see how it does. Now I have to get these apples out of here. They're stuck. Well, I might have to put the camera down for this. Let's see. All right, so I've decided to get this thing out and try it because my knuckles are burning. So, I don't know, I don't know. All right, it's done. Look at here. And just like that. We made applesauce, and I like it chunky. I left it a little bit chunky. There you go, that's how to make applesauce. All right, well, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.